The Red Web, a Necromunda Novel, Chapter 6, The Meeting. Lord Barish stood in the center of a round room. Dozens of the most prominent guilders from across the mercantile guilds of Minerva Hive sat in a circle around him, buzzing with side conversations. Several of his allies from the Guild of Light sat to his left, yet others, rivals in other guilds and even a few from his own, were scattered around. Many in the room were unknown to him. My lord, the Minerva Hive will never fall. This is folly. Even discussing it could mean our deaths, Barris shouted to the room, addressing the man who had called the assembly, Lord Moloch of the Water Guild. Why you would even call this meeting is beyond me. If you have nothing to add beyond recrimination, then you would do well to sit down, Lord Barish. The guilders here came of their own volition, and we will have this out. Lord Moloch was visibly agitated. Unusual or such a prominent player in the Hive's great web. The question is, should the guilds work with a revolutionary force to keep order in the Hive? We have seen the pamphlets. We know they intend to take us hostage. We have been offered lenient treatment if we continue to maintain the infrastructure. We also know what the cost will be if the Imperial House ever finds out. What is to be done? Lord Barish took his seat, successfully chastised out of continuing to challenge the meeting's legitimacy. Lady Ulster of the Corpse Guild next stood. They will kill us if we don't. It doesn't seem much of a choice to me. The piss ants are more immediate threat than the Imperial House. And let us be reminded that at the moment resources are strained. The Imperial House cannot commit the manpower to repair or bring our infrastructure back online without us. They will understand that we are needed to keep Minerva running when they retake it. A murmur went out in the crowd. What if the revolution is right? Lady Uyen of the Mercator Sangui stood up. I've shuffled serfs from job to job for half a century. This hive is a mess. The planetary governor does not care. We waste countless lives doing things the wrong way because it's the way we've always done them. There's no reason to keep repeating this. Heresy! shouted Barish, jumping into his feet. This is the heart of criminality. We cannot entertain the demands of our lessers, and we cannot challenge the Imperial House. You could damn us all, Uyen, and leave the Hive abandoned for no good reason other than sympathy for your charges. Sympathy? Sympathy? I've cut down mothers in front of their children. I've fought and killed dozens in the arena. I am not some sentimental fool. I see dysfunction and a lack of desire to fix it. These rabble-rousers aren't equipped to run a hive. They don't know the demands, but they are right that our system is failing. Every decade we lose more levels. Every few years we lose more systems. The coolant link in Polov Dome killed thousands. And now the corpse farms are failing because there's too much microbial activity. This cannot go on. We must consider the future of the hive. What is losing one hive compared to turning our backs on the god emperor? Barish was still on his feet. This is getting us nowhere, Lord Barish. Do you admit that the hive is failing, that we cannot continue as we have? Lord Morlock stirred down on him. Barish stuttered a response. I, I, I don't think any hive can last forever, my lord, but these fools are not the answer. They bring destruction down on our heads, not salvation. Uyen spoke up. They are useful to us where our hive's noble leadership is not. That is all I am saying. And if we wish to keep my nerve alive, we need to consider drastic action. Gothril's Needle has stood up to the Imperial House for millennia. Gothril's Needle? Minerva is not, Lord Moloch responded. We don't have their defenses or their resources, and there's tech running around in there that hasn't been lost to the rest of the hives. Don't think for a moment the Imperial House won't consider the largest hive in the cluster worthy of retaking. And let us not forget, Secundus or Arcos, a hive can be discarded if the threat is great enough. I don't think we should be making friends with the bomb throwers. Thank you, my lord, Barish was beaming. That is exactly what I would say. There is no time to deal with these Cretans. If anything, we should start disabling systems so they cannot damage them. I did not say I agreed with you, Lord Barish. There seems little stuffing them taking the high for a time. If we keep things running, we ingratiate ourselves as a means to preserve the hive. I will have my scribe render a transcript of the meeting reflecting that intention. We can offer it as evidence when the Imperial House comes calling. As Lady Alston noted, they need us to keep this hive running. They cannot simply call in guilders from elsewhere. There would be no one to train them. No one knows the secrets of this hive the way we do. Can we just ask for permission? Lord Tygon of the Mercator Lux inquired. 
You truly must be a fool to ask a question like that, barked Lady Ulster. If we ask, they'll tell us to choose loyalty and death over the hive. It's the only thing that would be appropriate by the Imperial House's own codes. If we disobey a direct order, that's on record. They can't but cut us down when they retake the hive. The only solution is to make the decision seem like it was our only option. Without fleeing, another gilder spoke up. Lord Ix of the Promethean Guild. We haven't lost the Hive Gates yet. There's still time to make it out. Surely we could best serve the Hive by surviving to help run it when it's retaken. Cowardice in the face of heresy is not going to win us a better fate, but it does make me think less of you, Ix, Barish retorted, using the Lord's name without his title stung the speaker. Don't think yourself above me because you'd rather fail at your charge by dying than live to rebuild. There will be countless refugees. We need only stay close. Ix was defiant. Unusual for him, in their past dealings, Barish had found him meek and unimposing. We could hide, came a shout. Unclear who'd said it. The speaker remained seated and the entire chamber burst into simultaneous talking. My fellow guilders, this is not productive, Moloch barked out. We must discuss this in an orderly fashion or we will never come to a reasonable conclusion. How are we supposed to come to a conclusion when everyone wants something different? Tygon asked. That's why I want to consult with the Imperial House. If we cannot come to a consensus, it's better to ask permission. The din exploded again. The meeting was getting out of control. A shoving match between two of the Iron Guilders escalated to blows, each being pulled back by one of their compatriots. There was too much bad blood in the room. There was no way to put aside the divided loyalties and come to an agreement. There would be no unity, and thus it seemed they would each have to choose for themselves and suffer the consequences individually. In short, they were courting their doom. Lady Uyen shouted out over the squabbles, Enough! I have tried patiently to guide you all. The mob is coming. The future is in their hands. The Imperial House will not last forever, and when the time of choosing comes, you will all be marked. They will know you are only helping to protect yourselves. They will steal what secrets they can, and they will dash you all upon the hovels that line the Great Hive's walls. We have opportunity after opportunity for change, but we have not taken them. There is no solution that does not involve blood. Helmar will fall. The Hivers will rise. There will be no end to the terror. If you are not ready to meet the Emperor, prepare to beg for your lives. She made for the door of the chamber, unwilling to share breast with these cowards and fools any longer. Someone made to grab her arm as she fled, Lord Barish. I won't let a heretic walk out of those... Before he could finish the sentence, the air was gone from his lungs. He looked down. He saw Uya's stiletto dagger sunk deep into his lungs. As quick as she struck, the blade was back in its sheath, and she reached the door, and as the crack of a bolt pistol rang out, another of the light guild had drawn and fired at her. Her displacer field threw her clear of the explosion and out the door, but the shot triggered a brawl. She impacted the wall in the hallway hard. Her ears rung from the force of the bolt's blast. Pulling herself up, she slammed the hatch behind her and entered into a sprint. Expecting to be followed, it seemed the fighting in the chamber had taken the focus off of her. She might get away free. She would not die today. The guilders are too loyal to serve, she said into her vox. We may need to kill most of them.